Over the last few years I've been contemplating an idea in my free time. This idea stemmed from a personal question. It was, how would the solar system function if Earth was flat? The model I've generated to help answer my question began when I found this NASA mission report called, Measuring Ozone from Space Shuttle Columbia. It said, the Shuttle Columbia carried the Shuttle Ozone Limb Sounding Experiment 2 as a demonstration of new technology that will be used on the next generation of meteorological satellites to monitor ozone change. Current instruments flying on NOAA and NASA satellites look directly downward toward the Earth, which limits their ability to accurately measure ozone in the lower layers of the stratosphere. New technology called limb viewing allows observation of the atmosphere from the side rather than straight down. When viewed from the side, the Earth looks like a flat circle, and the atmosphere appears like a halo around it. This halo is known as Earth's limb. From that side view, the layers of the atmosphere appear like layers in a cake, allowing instruments like SALS-2 to see the lower layers of the stratosphere. This is important because most of the recently observed ozone change, like the ozone hole, occurs in the lower stratosphere. Why would NASA purposely hold online for historic purposes a mission report that states Earth is flat and circular, if it wasn't? The supply geometric parameters set forth by this mission report became the foundation from which my cosmological egg grew. Based on the mission report's geometric parameters, Earth is flat and circular. Earth is also an electromagnet. That's why the focus of my flat earth model is about cycling electromagnetic H field lines and quantum mechanics. The mission report's description of the atmosphere stated, the atmosphere appeared like a halo around it. The curvature of the atmospheric halo represents cycling electromagnetic field lines. My egg can be broken down into three major sections, which include, cosmic string, star system, and heliosphere. The cosmic string represents one dimension of time as it cycles along the z-axis of the model providing the cosmological egg an electrical spin axis to rotate around. They were first theorized by Sir Thomas Kibble in the 1970s. In our ancient past, cosmic strings were known in some cultures as axis mundi. The cosmic string's elongated electrical loop cycle passes through every cosmological egg attached to the string before cycling back over the length of the cosmic string as a domain wall. Domain walls are two-dimensional singularities equaling two dimensions of space and one dimension of time. The star system takes up the bottom of the cosmological egg and represents flat Earth, named so because Earth in this model is a star, and in this model, all stars are flat planetary habitable magnets connected to the electrical loop cycle of cosmic strings. The planet itself represents a hypersurface of the present constantly accelerating up along the cosmic string's linear axis of time. Acceleration is due to the star system's superconductive state attempting to repel the cosmic string for being an applied electrical field. The top surface of the planet is magnetic north and the bottom surface is magnetic south. The planet's electromagnetic field cycle emerges from the north planetary dipole as a polar vortex and enters the south planetary dipole as a spindle vortex, then passes from south back to north in order to repeat the field cycle. The central planetary heart of the star system is called dipole entanglement, which has a positive and negative cycle. The positive dipole entanglement cycle represents the star system cycling electromagnetic field lines fed by the spindle vortex. Increased field pressure against the south planetary dipole generates a vacuum effect that draws in dielectric particles into the north planetary dipole, creating the negative dipole entanglement cycle which is fed by the heliosphere. The heliosphere takes up the top of the cosmological egg. The heliosphere's parents include, Mother Earth and Father Star System who are separated by time connected to the same cosmic string. The mother star system represents the top half of one star system which includes that planet's north magnetic surface, the positive dipole entanglement cycles linear release of positive charged field lines which extends to the tip of the bow shock before cycling back to the south planetary dipole, the positive dipole entanglement cycles north polar vortex of emerging field lines, and the negative dipole entanglement cycles vacuum intake of dielectric particles. 
the father star system represents the bottom half of another system connected to the same cosmic string and includes that planet's south magnetic surface, the positive entanglement cycle spindle vortex of positive charged field lines, and the negative dipole entanglement cycle's release of dielectric particles. In physics, J coupling is an indirect dipole to dipole coupling. For this model, the cosmic string's constant presence with a series of star systems attached remain linked due to an indirect dipole to dipole coupling of two star systems connected to the same cosmic string. This is why the heliosphere can be described as a cosmological fuse located between two superconducting electromagnetic star systems. The cosmic string is like a chameleon, this is because it allows the star system to positive charge the string emerging from the north planetary dipole and negative charge the string section entering the south planetary dipole. Negative charging backtracks the charge down to the next star system in the circuit series and couples with that star system's positive charge which bonds together to create the heliosphere. The blowout of solar winds from the termination shock represents the heliospheric fuses spherical expansion attempting to form an electromagnetic equilibrium between the mother and father star system. Below the heliosphere's termination shock is the heliospheric current sheet, which is a sprawling surface where the polarity of the sun switches from minus south to positive north, this current sheet creates an electrical balance between the heliosphere and the star system. The heliospheric current sheet resides over the star system's magnetosphere. In this diagram of my cosmological egg, the magnetosphere represents the star system's largest loop cycle of field lines which encapsulates the planet like a massive donut. The layer of field lines that forms the magnetosphere and the linear field lines that extends to form the heliosphere before cycling back as a bow shock are the only two layers of field lines that cycle from north to south without becoming grounded with the planet. The vortex funnel of the magnetosphere helps to condense dielectric particles around the passing linear positive charge field lines in order to increase the overall negative charge required to match the positive ionized output emerging from the north planetary dipole. The battle continues between positive and negative charges below the heliospheric current sheet because the negative cycle needs to remain neutral with the positive charge in order to reach the north planetary dipole which leads to the negative dipole entanglement cycle. The battle is between the heliosphere's increasing negative charge and the increased positive charge supplied by the spindle vortex. The positive output supplied to the star system by the spindle vortex is consistent, this means the negative charge only needs to condense to a matching overall charge in order to reach the north planetary dipole. As the dielectric charge begins to condense, it passes through a few optic-like electromagnetic lenses, called heliospheric current sheets. Since each sheet cycles in unison, it's difficult to distinguish one layer from another, so the only current sheet that will stand out is the top sheet which rotates around the cosmic string like a ballerina skirt that represents alternating positive and negative currents. The magnetosphere's vortex acts like a chalice collecting dielectric particles to condense and help maintain a balance between a high energy order of magnitude and a dielectric order of magnitude that can condense to increase its charge in order to overcome an electrical barrier. As the dielectric charge constantly condenses to pass through each of the three heliospheric current sheets, the remainder of dielectric particles that fail to condense to the next level are rejected from their linear trajectory in a deflection stream along a new trajectory away from the cosmic string. Deflection streams make one rotation around the cosmic string every 24 hours due to the stream's focal point with the cosmic string, unlike the planet that takes 365.25 days to make a single rotation around the cosmic string and the moon that takes one month to orbit around the cosmic string. Each deflection stream, Earth, the moon, and all exoplanets follow the spin's motion of the spindle vortex rotating around the cosmic string. As the deflection stream passes through the magnetosphere's ionized charge, the radius aperture of the stream expands. Each layer of polar vortex field lines that emerge from the same north planetary dipole arches out to different circumferences. The positive charge combining every layer of electromagnetic H field lines embodies the entirety of the ionosphere. The more ionized field layers a deflection stream has to pass through, the wider the surface aperture of light can be. 
The reason why the smallest deflection stream can cover three world tree rings is from passing through the most ionospheric layers of field lines. In the winter months, the sun's location within the termination shock is closer to the planet than in the summer months. This is from a dipole entanglement alternating cycle between the positive spindle vortex and the negative heliosphere's order of magnitude. As the termination shock sun drops in altitude it presses down each heliospheric current sheet, which drops the deflection altitude of each stream, which alternates the location of their stream's contact with the ionosphere and the surface. It's the alternating dipole entanglement cycle that changes the season from summer to winter and back. Everything flows in a constant cycle from day to day and year to year. As the smallest deflection stream's altitude of release is pushed closer to the north planetary dipole for the winter, its stream begins to collide with the downward slope of the stratospheric polar vortex which increases the overall electrical charge of that layer's field lines. The increased charge of stratospheric field lines increases the barrier strength of that polar vortex surrounding the north planetary dipole which allows temperatures to decrease for the winter months within the stratospheric coverage circumferences. For this model, there are seven different polar vortices. Each polar vortex doubles in size over its predecessor. The smallest polar vortex is the tropospheric polar vortex. Following the tropospheric polar vortex in size is the stratospheric polar vortex. Then the mesospheric polar vortex. Thermospheric polar vortex. Exospheric polar vortex. Magnetospheric polar vortex. And then the heliosphere. Each polar vortex that emerges from the north planetary dipole loops as part of the star system's positive entanglement cycle. I modeled the positive entanglement cycle after Einstein's energy mass equivalence. Einstein was the first to propose that the equivalence of mass and energy is a general principle and a consequence of the symmetries of space and time. I modeled the negative entanglement cycle after Faraday's law of induction which states, the induced electromotive force in any closed circuit is equal to the negative of the time rate of change of the magnetic flux enclosed by the circuit. The overall view of the star system's entanglement cycle pushes that the system's total current density and electrical charge output of that field passes through the planetary magnet one direction with a clockwise easterly spin rotation, and the negative time rate of change passes through the planetary magnet the opposite direction with a counterclockwise westerly spin rotation, due to their entanglement.